What are some crazy wow moments that might, you might see? I, I think one of the most important things is uh, the accuracy and then these long context windows. So Explain what the long context window is again. So you're absorbing information right now, and it's quite high definition because you can see everything here and other stuff, but you're still writing it down. And the reason our organizations get big is because text is a lossy transmission format. We lose so much context. The final PDF loses all of that stuff. Now with the new Google models, Nat has some amazing companies in this space as well. You can upload hundreds of thousands of words, thousands of documents, and the AI can interpret them all at once. That doesn't need to be trained on it. So you can upload all of your ideas and say, build a business based on this, and it will do that. Or you can upload like a whole bunch of movies and then tell it to write a script that incorporates all of that, and it will do that at inference time. That, again, is something superhuman, but we all have these massive, like, repositories of all these ideas we've had, being able to dump that now and then the AI, without having to be trained, spit back answers, ideas, and things like that, I think is a really huge step along with that composition step that I kind of discussed before. I think, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I think there will be a couple things coming probably pretty soon. Um, it's hard to predict exact timelines on these things. Uh, sometimes things happen faster than you expect and sometimes a little slower, but one of the clearly amazing, clearly possible now uh, products to build is a voice-to-voice -voice model that's indistinguishable from talking to a human, maybe for a conversation of up to a couple minutes. Where What happens after a couple of minutes? Well, maybe you can kind of just tell somehow <laughs> that it's not quite human after a couple of minutes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm setting a milestone that I think is achievable this year. Yeah. Maybe when you, if you can do two minutes, you can do 12 minutes. I, I don't know. Um, but... Uh, yeah, you know, you would, it's, a, it's actually about it, all the technologies there, it all just has to be integrated. And so you need the sort of the ability to recognize speech is there, the ability to interpret it with a language model and generate responses is there, and then the ability to turn that text into incredibly realistic voices there. And kind of putting that all together into a package that has very low latency, that's talking the way we talk, where you can kind of interrupt me and... Maybe there's an avatar that's giving you this human like, I mean, Aristotle was very impressive, but I knew that that was not a real person. Right. And so um, I think we could, yeah, well, we he could. he was a real person. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then I think the other thing that's a very big deal is this, uh, this idea of autonomy and agents. Um, there's been a lot of talk of it with AI over the last year. Today, these things are not agents. They're tools. They're call and response. You go to ChatGPT, you type something, you hit enter, you watch the response kind of stream back. And I think what people don't necessarily understand is that when these language models are responding to you, it's almost like a rap battle. They have a fixed amount of time to generate each word. And so they can't sort of sit there and ponder for a minute you know, what they're going to say. They have to talk to a metronome. And um, so that's why when you see the words that they're writing out, that's not like they've thought about it a lot. And then you see the words. It's actually the thinking is happening during the output. And Would you say that's how a human does it too? I often. I mean, a lot of times. I often I'm, Sometimes think, yeah. I'm really pissed off at what came out of my mouth because I didn't think about it in advance. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, sometimes you have a conversation with a smart friend, and you just forming the words to respond, you have a better idea. And so I think we we definitely do that too. But um, the agent, the autonomy, is about kind of increasing the unit of work you can trust the AI to do without making a mistake. So right now you can ask it one question, get a response, you interpret it, you figure out the next thing. But what if you could go do 10 or 100 steps? You're talking about an AI business. You know, do you trust it to come up with the title of the blog post that you're going to post? Or do you, do you trust it to actually come up with the whole idea of the marketing campaign, right? Come up with the strategy for how to execute it, all of the content it's going to generate, the partners it will reach out to and negotiate advertising or, or whatever it's going to do. Have those conversations sort of multi-step successfully all the way to like measuring its results without supervision. And I think that agency thing, we're starting to see it in programming. There was a very impressive demo a week or two ago of a company called Cognition that... Um, I think it was maybe the it was arguably the first really impressive demo of working agents in AI, and and they did it with GPT-4. So not with a new brand new model. They did it by being very clever about the way they squeeze and distill the intelligence out of GPT-4 by repeatedly calling it and and analyzing and evaluating its results and choosing the best ones. And so sort of going from rap battle to like draft and redraft and sort of think and ponder about it a little bit harder mode. And uh, it can do hundreds of steps. 
yeah. and programming Amazing. successfully. So.